the afternoon session with uh, Christian Ast uh, from Stuttgart, and he will talk about superconducting quantum interference at the atomic scale. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. So, He's pointing can I? more towards there. I think it's, it's got some connection problem, oh. and uh, the receiver is down there. Not really. I can. I'll just stay here. Okay, sorry about no, that. No, no, right. Okay, let me see. Um, all right, so, um, yes. Thank you for the introduction and also thank you to the organizers for the uh, kind invitation to present our research here today. Um, yes, so uh, I want to talk about superconducting quantum interference at the atomic scale, scale which we uh, investigate using scanning tunneling microscopy. So in a way, this technique is quite a bit different from what we have heard in this workshop to, uh, so far, but there's also very distinct similarities um, because in the end, uh, an STM is no more than a tunnel junction. Um, okay, before I start, I want to uh, acknowledge the people who are involved. This is, I work in the department of Klaus Kern at the MPI for solid state research, which always makes my daughter giggle because she's wondering what kind of research you can do with solids. Um, but there is a lot of things we can do, I guess. Uh, then uh, the, most of the work that I present is, has been done by uh, Sujoy and Haonan, and uh, some of the work also by Piotr. And then I want to also acknowledge the invaluable theory support that we uh, have received over the past years, most notably uh, the group from Ulm, Joachim, Björn, and Ciprian, um, who really have helped us understand everything a lot better than we could have hoped for, and also uh, Carlos and Alfredo from um, Madrid. Uh, we've heard Carl, uh, Alfredo before, and then uh, also uh, Annika, who helped us out of a tight spot with the last paper, um, those are the contributors to the research that I will um, present today. Okay, so we have interference in the title, and interference needs coherence, and this is typically a problem in STM because the STM operates in the dynamic Coulomb blockade regime, which implies sequential tunneling and uh, makes coherence a little bit more difficult. Um, so uh, we have to account for phase fluctuations in the tunnel junction. However, these phase fluctuations are typically uh, on a much longer time scale than individual tunneling events, so that uh, basically if we are happy with a short coherence time, uh, then uh, uh, everything will work out. And this is basically what I want to show you in the following. So one example uh, to also connect to the microwave theme uh, of the workshop. We have started also using microwaves and uh, shining them in our tunnel junction. Um, these are some of the first experiments. We have here a reference junction. Uh, this is taken uh, uh, with a vanadium tip and a vanadium sample. So both are superconducting at 300 millikelvin. Uh, you see the coherence peaks here. Um, this is our reference junction. Now, if we uh, turn on microwaves at 75 gigahertz, shine them into the junction um, at a very small amplitude, we see a short reduct uh, slight reduction of the main peak and we see replica showing up. And if we increase the um, amplitude now, we see replica and the modulation of the intensity quite a bit. And if you put this on, on a more continuous scale, you actually see a nice fan um, of these two coherence peaks here from the bias voltage as a function of the microwave amplitude. You see the coherence peaks here and here as they fan out. And now uh, you see the modulation of these peaks here and these are actually indications of um, coherent interference of uh, the uh, tunneling electrons with the microwaves. So there is some coherence in the tunneling uh, uh, e event or in the tunnel junction. And then the uh, superposition of the 
peaks here in the back show, uh, or in, in the, at higher frequency, uh, at higher amplitudes, shows an incoherent superposition of tunneling events. So that we can basically say we have coherent behavior within one tunneling event and incoherent superposition between tunneling events. So, um, okay. I don't think I have to motivate uh, coherence and the importance of coherence in this audience, really. So there have been, uh, we're all looking for coherence in one way or another. And now we are um, uh, also looking for coherent behavior in the STM. And uh, uh, there's basically two topics uh, for the shortness of time. I can only cover one of these topics. Maybe in the end, if there's still time, I can talk about this. Uh, what we've done two years ago here, this has been published in uh, Nature Physics two years ago, is we were able to actually show, demonstrate tunneling between two individual uh, quasi-particle energy levels, namely Yushiba Rusinov states inside a superconducting gap. And by changing the tunnel coupling between these two, uh, between the tip and the sample, we were able to see some emergent coherent coupling uh, in the quasi-particle tunneling. So uh, what I do want to talk about in the following is the question if we can realize um, some, at least some rudimentary phase sensitivity in the STM um, that, uh, uh, such that we would be able to detect, uh, for example, a pi junction, yeah? similar to what we have in a superconducting squid, as you see here, where we have the junction of interest with a quantum dot and the reference junction, and then um, we can uh, get the interference between the phase uh, by uh, yeah, basically super, superimposing these, uh, the phases of the two junctions. Um, and I will show you in the following that we can, at least to some extent, move that concept to the STM tunnel junction and at least detect a sign change in the, in the phase. Okay, to do that, let me start at the beginning. We operate a, a, a millikelvin STM in Stuttgart in a precision lab. This is a, essentially a low noise or noise free environment. You see um, the uh, dilution refrigerator here, which operates at a base temperature of 10 millikelvin. The STM sits about here. It's a scan head that's just the size of my fist. We have a prep chamber down here and the periphery of the dill fridge. Um, and then we have a huge concrete slab that weighs about 100 tons to decouple uh, vibrationally from the environment so that we can have really very low noise uh, environment for the STM. Um, and the, the theme in my group is basically to look for new quantum limits. And one of the inherent quantum limits in the STM is to have atomic resolution. And this is probably one of the defining differences uh, compared to other tunnel junctions. Here you see, um, an aluminum surface, which has nothing to do with the rest of the talk, it just looks nice. You see uh, atoms, the uh, aluminum atoms in nicely uh, arranged in a square lattice and some defects, some of them are oxygen, some of them are uh, carbon, and some of them are subsurface, and you see these standing waves emanating to the, to the surface. And um, then as we lower the temperature, we get all kinds of quantization effects, we get charge quantization, we were able to see this in uh, uh, the, the dynamic Coulomb blockade. Uh, to do this, we have actually pulled one aluminum atom out of the surface and placed it onto the surface so that we can create a tunnel junction between two aluminum atoms, uh, which actually turn out to feature just one transport channel, and the, the other transport channels are at least an order of magnitude smaller in transmission, so that we were able to to, to de demonstrate these charge quantization effects here and also single channel transport through a Josephson junction. And this connects very nicely to, for example, the work that has been done in Saclay and, uh, and other places. So from this point of view, uh, the STM is just another tunnel junction. Okay, so how do we create a pi junction? Uh, let's start out with a quantum dot. We have a quantum dot that is connected to superconducting uh, leads here, and now if we place a single spin onto a quantum dot, uh, then, well, the short version is we uh, exchange the uh, fermionic operators uh, across the junction, and then we create a sign change which reduce, which um, um, leads to a supercurrent reversal. So in the STM, 
we basically have a very asymmetric uh, quantum dot, if you will, because uh, we place a magnetic impurity on the, on the tip or on the sample, and uh, this is usually strongly coupled to one side, and then we have the tunnel junction here on the other side. Yeah? And now if we place a magnetic impurity onto a superconducting substrate, we induce a so-called yushiba rusinov state, and this is basically what we want to work with. So what happens now? We have a clean superconductor. The density of states features a BCS gap. We have a vanadium substrate, for example, um, and we see coherence peaks. Now we place our magnetic impurity on top. The magnetic impurity has some exchange coupling with the substrate, and uh, this induces a so-called yushiba rusinov state inside the gap. So the yushiba rusinov state is a Bogolyubov quasi-particle, which is a superposition of electrons and holes. And if you plot that in the density of states, you project uh, this Bogolyubov quasi-particle onto the electrons and holes. And this is why you always see two peaks at plus minus the energy um, inside the gap here. And what I would also like to point out is that uh, the coherence peaks are actually suppressed. Yeah? So this will become later on important. Um, uh, just as a comment now that you see this here. Okay, so what happens now? Um, we can actually change the exchange coupling, so from the magnetic impurity to the substrate, and if we start with a weak coupling, um, the Shiba state moves from the gap edge towards zero, yeah, both peaks move towards zero, and in the weak coupling regime, the impurity spin is free, so that the total spin of the system is the impurity spin, in this case of spin one half, and uh, the superconductor has a spin zero, so we have a total spin of one half. Now across the quantum, uh, across zero here, we have a quantum phase transition. The ground state changes. You can think of it as a Cooper pair breaking and then occupying the Shiba state, so that in the ground state, the Shiba state is now occupied, and in the excited state, it's empty. Um, but in the, in the ground state now, the Cooper pair, uh, the, 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 the Bokolubov quasi-particle that, that occupies the Shiba state now screens the spin su that, such that the total spin of the system becomes zero. So, and, yeah, now we want to investigate that with um, uh, STM, so it's a local technique. We have a local perturbation, so it's an ideal te te technique to, to uh, show that. There's a lot of work has been done starting in 1997, uh, with uh, Ali Astani, for example, and then uh, continue on later on. Katharina Franke has done a lot of nice work on that, and in the um, past few years, more and more people got interested in this work, and so did we. So, and our favorite superconductor to do this is actually vanadium. You see this here. We have a vanadium 100 surface uh, with nice square terraces. But you see that the surface is not so nice and clean, we, for example, uh, how, how, uh, as in, in the aluminum surface, yeah, if you zoom in, you see uh, an oxygen reconstruction. This is part of the preparation process. This is very difficult to get vanadium clean. However, we can turn this nuisance into a virtue because it turns out that a few of these defects uh, actually feature a very nice Shiba state yeah, because they have a free spin. And uh, the nice thing about these Shiba states compared to I would say 95% of all other Shiba sites that have been pre prepared so far, uh, is that they actually feature a single Shiba state inside the gap that you can see here. Uh, and they are, for, the, for all we know, uh, uh, very nice spin one and a half uh, impurities. Yeah? So which makes the theory behind it uh, a lot easier to calculate. So uh, blue is the data, red is a fit, and uh, the Shiba state is shown here, nice and sharp. And what you see here is also a coherence peak. Yeah? Now remembering from before that the uh, spectrum on the Shiba state does not feature a, a coherence peak, we conclude that we have here actually at least two transport channels, one going through the Shiba state and one going through an empty BCS gap, yeah? which is a straightforward conclusion because the spectral features are so decidedly different. Okay, so we keep that in mind for later. Uh, just to characterize this Shiba state a little bit more, or this impurity, we have turned on the magnetic field here, for example. This is not a linear scale here on the y-axis. Um, 
we have uh, on the bias voltage on the on the x-axis and the DIDV signal on the uh, as the color scale here. This is the coherence peak here and here, and then we have the Shiba side. And as we turn on the magnetic field and increase the field, the uh, the gap closes and eventually quenches, and then we see a very nice condo feature here, um, which as we increase the field further, splits up um, into two peaks. And this is already a nice indication that we have a spin one half impurity because uh, the two peaks, if you extend that to zero, they cross at a finite magnetic field, yeah? which also indicates the condo temperature of about one Kelvin in this case. Okay, uh, another advantage of these uh, vanadium impurities is that they are extremely flexible because they depend uh, very much on the local uh, environment. Yeah, some, some uh, other defects or structural defects in the, in, the, in, the, in the vicinity. So that we find them actually throughout the energy gap here. This is a histogram of Shiba sets that we found on the sample and also on the tip. It turns out that um, the PhD student, Haunan, who, who, who did these measurements initially, he, uh, he found that by dipping the tip into the sample, he can pick up uh, or modify the tip such that we get a Shiba state in the tip apex. Yeah? And he can do it so reproducibly and uh, flexibly that he wrote a code that, uh, uh, where he can say, I want a Shiba state at that energy so that the algorithm uh, goes and, and dips the tip until we get a Shiba state at this certain energy and, um, uh, and then this, this takes about 10 to 100 minutes, and then we're done, and we have a Shiba set at the tip. So now, uh, the trick is now uh, to, to demonstrate uh, a pi junction or even a zero pi transition, is that we want to get uh, these measurements with uh, exactly the same tunnel junction, yeah? to, 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 to verify that, that nothing else changes. Yeah? So now um, the um, capabilities of changing the, uh, the parameters in, in, in the STM uh, are quite a bit more limited than, than in, in, in other tunnel junctions because we cannot just slap on a, a gate uh, uh, voltage somewhere or, and, and tune the parameters this way um, because um, it's simply too small. Um, so there's other tricks that we have to do and it turns out that there is a nice uh, trick that we can do here in the tunnel junction. So we have here basically our quantum dot. We have the impurity here and we have the bath on this side on the tunnel junction on the other side. And um, so what happens now is if you think about this in terms of the Anderson impurity model, we have an impurity substrate coupling gamma here. Yeah? And because the distance between the impurity and the substrate is just a couple of angstroms, uh, there are atomic forces pulling, attractive atomic forces pulling the impurity away from the tip. So if we now move the tip closer, which we can do very easily, uh, we change the atomic forces between the impurity and the substrate um, such that we pull more and more on the tip uh, impurity uh, by moving the tip closer such that we change the impurity substrate coupling yeah, as we move the tip closer. So and this is our way of changing the coupling. Um, so this has been done. There's a number of publications that came out in the, also from us uh, in, in the past few years. So this is actually quite a general effect and well studied, um, not just on uh, um, uh, Shiba states, but in tunnel junctions in general. So and now the trick is now to find an impurity that moves across the quantum phase transition while we are changing the tip sample distance and we have to be able to measure the Josephson effect at the same time. Yeah? So, and luckily we found uh, several such impurities and what you see here is the, uh, uh, the collection of spectra um, where we have the bias voltage on the, on the x-axis and the conductance which is the tip sample distance on the y-axis and what you see here is the uh, Shiba state here, changing energy um, on the left and the right, and moving through a quantum phase transition here. The Josephson effect in the center you cannot see because it's small. Yeah, we'll zoom into that region later. Um, so now you see that the Shiba state moves and has a 
minimum here, basically closest to, to zero and moves away. So it does not cross zero because we have a superconducting tip and a superconducting sample, so that the zero point is actually offset by the delta of the, of the sample, yeah? Okay, so now let's look at the Josephson effect. This is uh, uh, the, what the Josephson effect looks like in our STM. So we have a dynamic Coulomb blockade, and we can actually describe this very nicely with the P of E theory. Uh, the spectrum looks slightly noisy because we are very far away, so the current is also not very strong here. Uh, we have just a few hundred pico, uh, femtoamps here, uh, but now we move closer. Yeah? We see the conductance on the x-axis, and this, the, the spectrum from last slide is actually this spectrum, and then we move closer and we increase in amplitude, and uh, you see a strange behavior already here at the, across the quantum phase transition. The uh, uh, Josephson effect does not increase monotonically, but it actually even decreases a little bit. So we have to look at this a little bit closer um, by plotting the current maximum that you see here um, as a function of conductance. Yeah? In the dynamic Coulomb blockade regime, uh, the whole spectrum is basically proportional to the square of the Josephson energy. Yeah? So um, we can just take the maximum and plot that as a function of uh, conductance. Yeah? This is shown here in the blue, uh, the blue trace here, and you see far away from the quantum phase transition here, um, we see a square dependence on the uh, conductance here and here and something happens across the quantum phase transition. Yeah, and the quantum phase transition is here. You see red uh, is the, um, the position of the Shiva state. Yeah? It has a minimum at the quantum phase transition, and then uh, we move across here. So we can rearrange this a little bit. We take the square root to get uh, uh, rid of the square dependence, and then we divide by the conductance, and um, uh, we get something that is uh, reminiscent of the ICRN product, yeah? And uh, this basically results in a step. So we have a maximum here, then we move across the quantum phase transition, and we have a, a small uh, uh, value here. So I can tell you already here that this is due to a zero junction on the left side, which leads to a constructive interference between transport channels, and a pi junction on the right side, um, which leads to a destructive interference. Um, and the slope here actually just depends on the temperature of the system, which in this case, in the fit, uh, turns out to be 75 millikelvin. Okay, how does this work, the STM, the sensitivity in the STM? Um, as I've indicated before, we actually have more than one transport channel, uh, one that goes through the Shiba state, yeah, and another one, that goes uh, through a BCS channel uh, with no Shiba state. Yeah, this can be realized, for example, by having orbitals, uh, one orbital that has a free spin and another degenerate orbital, they overlap, and then uh, we get, for example, two transport channels. Yeah, and they interfere now. If we plot uh, the energy phase relation here in the, in the tunneling regime, so there's not much amplitude here, we have the energy phase relation of a BCS uh, junction and uh, uh, the Shiba junction here close to the quantum phase transition. Uh, if we zoom in here, um, we get an in-phase situation on one side of the quantum phase transition, and then uh, the sum of the channels uh, gives a larger amplitude. Now, the Shiba side moves across the quantum phase transition. This means that the lower branch moves above zero and the upper branch moves below zero, and this corresponds to a sign change in the uh, energy phase relation here that you can see here, and now the sum actually becomes a difference, and the amplitude of the, uh, energy, the, the total energy phase relation is um, different. Now in the STM, we are not really sensitive to the, uh, to the sign, because we measure the square of the, um, of, the energy, of the Josephson energy, but we're still sensitive to the magnitude, yeah? And this is what we are actually measuring, yeah? To be a bit more quantitative, we have the, the current voltage characteristics in the dynamic Coulomb blockade regime involves the P of E function here, uh, which gives the characteristic shape of the uh, spectrum that we see, and everything is proportional to the Josephson energy here, to lowest order. And the connection to the energy phase relation is 
simply a Fourier transform of the energy phase relation. And uh, to lowest order, we get the cosine dependence. And so E1 is basically the amplitude of the energy phase relation here. And this is, in the end, what we are measuring. Um, yeah, OK, so and we have to still uh, consider temperature so uh, that we have a probability of having the Shiva set in the ground state or thermally excited. Uh, P is the probability to, to be uh, thermally excited now. And this leads to um, the situation where we have a constructive interference and destructive interference here. And this is what gives the finite slope across the quantum phase transition. And this is what you see here. The red line is a fit to the model that I just presented to you. And this gives us a zero junction on um, the left side and the pi junction on the right side. OK, and as I indicated before, the slope is given by the temperature. So now, um, the zero junction would be the screen spin regime, and the pi junction would be the free spin regime, where we have the spin in the junction. Uh, the question now is, do we have an independent means to uh, verify that we have made the correct assignment? And here we go back to the Kondo effect, when we turn on the magnetic field, and um, we, uh, here we plot the, the full width or the half width at half maximum of the Kondo peak that we have measured with exactly the same junction in the magnetic field. And you see that the coupling, so the width of the Kondo peak continuously decreases as we increase the conductance. This means that uh, the Kondo temperature decreases and with a de decreasing Kondo temperature, we have a decreasing um, uh, exchange coupling, and a decreasing exchange coupling means that we are moving from a zero junction to a pi junction from the screen spin to the free spin regime. And this basically verifies our assignment. And um, okay, and with this, we have demonstrated the supercurrent reversal in uh, Yushiba Rusinov junction, yeah, which is. Uh, yeah, where we have exploited the interference between two transport channels, very reminiscent of uh, a squid, except that now we have a squid with a zero enclosed area because the two transport channels are basically in the same atom or in, in, in so closely uh, located that, that we will not be able to pass any flux through it, but still we, uh, we can pass, uh, we, we can detect a sign change in this. Okay, how much time do I have left? Mm, yeah, okay, I don't know. I want. I can. I can show you just very briefly the uh, the tunnel junction, the the, the uh, Shiba Shiba tunneling. Yeah, when we when we do this with, um, we can do tunneling through individual quasi particle levels. Yeah, by taking a Shiba set in the tip and the Shiba set in the sample. So very briefly, we have this is an empty junction with coherence peaks. Yeah, we move over a Shiba state, we get uh, the Shiba peak here and here. We place a Shiba state on the tip, we get a Shiba state. Uh, now we take that exact Shiba state and move it over the previous impurity and we get an entirely new feature inside the gap here. Yeah. Um, you see this here, that this, this is an entirely new spectral feature, which is related to tunneling between two individual quasi-particle levels. Yeah? And this is basically the smallest tunnel junction that you can possibly create, because if you take any of these components away, the tunneling current is gone. Yeah? And this is you, you see here. Any, anything is missing, then the, the feature is gone. It is easier to see this feature actually as a current, yeah? because then it's a peak. Yeah? And if you zoom in, you see a nice peak. And this is actually a direct measurement of the P of E function, yes, because uh, the intrinsic energy levels are roughly one hundredth of the width of the uh, of the, the P of E function. So um, they we are basically mapping out the P of E function, and you see that we have zero current before and zero current after uh, this, and so. Uh, we, we basically demonstrate tunneling between two individual quasi-particle levels. So what we can do with this, just very briefly, we can plot, the, we can measure this as a function of 
conductance, so tunnel coupling, and we can plot the area of this peak. Yeah? This is a very unique situation that we can actually have access to the area, and this goes, moves from a um, linear regime to a sublinear regime, and this is basically the sublinear regime is an indication of coherent coupling, and the transition point here, yeah, linear, sublinear, indicates can actually uh, be used to infer the lifetime of the Shiva state of about 48 nanoseconds. Now, in some ways this is a large number, in some ways this is a small number. We have done no optimization um, of, the, of the superconductor, so we are basically limited probably through quasi-particle um, interactions. Um, but uh, this, this actually shows that this, this, this tunneling is actually extremely efficient and uh, allows us to go to um, the, the uh, probably the largest tunneling, tunnel, tunneling resistance that we have ever measured of 22 tera ohms. Yeah, the set point is 0.18 femtoamps, and we can measure a peak of about 1.2 femtoamps. Yeah, here this is the Shiba Shiba tunnel on one side, Shiba Shiba tunneling on the other side. Yeah, and um, this shows how extremely efficient this is because you're basically tunneling through two singularities. And with this, I conclude. Thank you for your attention. So thank you for your interesting talk. Are there questions? So this uh, picture you presented uh, in the first uh, slides apply for classical impurities? this quantum uh, phase transition, while in your case, if I understood properly, you are dealing with the spin one half, right? Uh, yes. Do you uh, observe signatures of quantum effects? Um, what would you, what would you describe, what, what would be a quantum signature in your I mean, somehow uh, you translate the, the, yeah, okay. the zero, the S equals zero to the Kondo yes, case. Um, but Kondo is, uh, is not exactly the same thing because Kondo is a true one half uh, model with the. Yes, okay, so we. Uh, quantum, but we, while the other is. Yes, it's classical. We, we use the, uh, the basically the mean field uh, theory to describe everything. Yes, but uh, we, it, it actually turns out that um, we do see signatures of residual condo coupling in the superconducting state. Yeah, um, this is uh, we're quite certain of that. Uh, it, I, I don't have a spectrum here to, to show this, but it, it would be present here as well. But you would have to look at the current voltage characteristic. It's not visible in the in the in the differential conductance. Yeah, so you you, ha you have to, you have to know what to look for, but it's it's basically there. And this this in the end means that the spin is not entirely screened uh, free in the free spin regime. Yeah, it's partially screened. Um, uh, but it's always fully screened in the in the screen spin regime because then the quantum effect basically takes over. Yeah, um, but we haven't. I mean, the model works so well in this in this sense. But uh, for what we are doing, it works nicely. But uh, you're right; uh, it can be refined to include the quantum effect also in the superconducting state. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other question? Yes, I was curious about the, the final peak in which you see the POV um, uh, imprinting in the IV curve. So there is a slight asymmetry. Is that the finite, uh, it's the detailed balance? You mean here? Uh, no, oh. no, no, in the Shiba, uh, Shiba. Oh, Shiba, Shiba, yes. Yeah. Um, yes, there is, if you look closely, there is a slight asymmetry, see, yes. So and that's, that's the detailed balance of your yes, uh, energy. That, that we attribute. So, uh, yeah, and um, uh, um, what kind of environment uh, do you have in order to have these? Uh... Um, okay, part of the environment is vacuum, yeah, which if, if you want to call it an environment, uh, but the, 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 the most dominant part is uh, actually the tip in the junction acting as an antenna, yeah? Okay. 
And uh, we see, uh, it's not obvious in, in these, uh, but in, and I don't know if we can see this in the uh, Josephson spectra here. Uh, uh, uh. No, we, I, I cut off too early. But if, if, you, if you move a little bit further out here, we actually see resonances okay, from, uh, from the antenna resonances, yeah? And we can move them by changing the length of the tip and this, uh, by changing the length of the tip, yeah? So the tip is a lambda quarter, quarter lambda resonator or a quarter lambda antenna, like a monopole antenna. And uh, we can model this very nicely, even quantitatively, yes. Okay. So that, that, that's the, probably the biggest contribution to the, to the, uh, uh, to the, to the environmental impedance. Okay, we need to move on. Let's thank the speaker again.